So any questions from the audience? OK, we have a question here. I have a three-part question for Linus. This oh. is Kartik Sabarel. If you, and you're free to answer any or all of, or whatever of these questions. If you were to, the first part is if you were to divide your experience with Linux over the last 18 years, what has inspired, motivated, excited, uh, really energized you over different phases of the project? That's the first part of the question. The second part is what is really uh, inspiring, motivating, exciting you over the next, say, five to 10 years or however far you want to project? And the third part of the question is would you ever consider taking the fan base, uh, political capital, whatever you've gotten out of Linux, and investing it in any other open source or other initiative or efforts. Thanks. OK, so the motivational part, it's actually, it has changed a lot over, over the years. Uh, it started out being all about the technology and all about just really twiddling with the hardware and, and just learning and just doing something cool and sitting in my basement. It wasn't a basement at the time. It was my mother's basement. No, quite. <laughs> uh, uh, but really being low level and doing the programming. And uh, that eventually faded. And then it became somewhat about the community. And the fame was, hey, that was great. But also, it new problems that I hadn't had before, the SMP work. Uh, many years ago that other people started and I kind of took over, um, continued to motivate me. These days it's all about the community. It's all about, uh, actually I, wouldn't, I shouldn't say the community because when anybody else says the community, my hackles rise. It's not the community. There's no one community. But it's this whole thing about working together with people and it's fairly social and I really enjoy arguing to we know this. Uh, so it's, it's actually a big part of my life is this occasional flame threads that I love getting into and telling people they're idiots. And, and it gets it out of my system. Uh, and a lot of, I, I really like the, the email back and forth. And that's mostly all my technical problems were solved so long ago that I don't even care. I don't do it because of the, the my own needs on my machines. I do it because it's just interesting and, and, and I feel like I'm doing something worthwhile. And I don't know what's going to happen in the next five to ten years, but as long as I don't see this, it's interesting and I feel like I'm doing something worthwhile, I don't see that going away. So. Did you ever do anything other than Linux? I have done something other than Linux. I did Git. And for, <laughs> for about half a year, what is a long time ago already? I mean, it's, it's a couple of years ago by now. For half a year, that was what I did. I, my kernel work was basically zero. I continued merging stuff, but, but all I did was get, and I did use my capital to get it to have a high enough profile that I got other people involved. And I don't need to do that anymore. I'm, I'm involved in that project, but in the Git project, I'm now one of those occasional, like, small people who send in patches to the real maintainer. And, and, uh, and it was interesting and it was fun. It was not a lifelong calling like the kernel has been. So you feel the kernel is a lifelong calling? <laughs> it has been so far. I've been doing this pretty much half my life, all my adult life. right? So actually, that could lead into a, another interesting question, which you didn't ask, but might have been at the root of what you did ask, which is if you actually look at the senior kernel people today, the average age of senior maintainers is rising. We're not actually, I mean, if you look at, I'm going gray, he's losing his hair, everybody else is showing signs of age, right? Is there something we should be doing to ensure continuity of Linux development to the next generation? Because obviously, we can't all go on forever. Um, I think other people can answer that, but, but well, it's... We'll take it around the panel, then. Yeah, I'll start off and saying we are doing something about that. I do think we're having a lot of new people show up. I mean, part of the uh, John's earlier comment today in his talk was that we had 2,500 people involved in the last year. And that's a lot of people. And most of them will never come. I mean, a lot of people just send one patch or two patches. But it's also how we do end up getting new blood. Uh, it's clearly true that I've been doing this for 18 years. I know some people who have been doing it for almost as long. I mean, within just a few months. Uh, 
a lot of the kernel maintainers have been doing this for 10, some 15 years. I mean, so, so we are getting older, but I, I think there's still a lot of young people involved. I agree there's a lot of young people involved, but not necessarily at the top. So, okay, give me the youngest maintainer. And who it used to be was Adam Belay at 16, got invited to the Colonel Summit. Right, but he's no longer a maintainer. Yeah, he ran away. Youngest senior maintainer. <laughs> <laughs> that obviously had nothing to do with you taking him out to lunch, right? I don't even know what they look right? like. Yeah. I mean, I only get emails. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. We don't know. I mean, the yeah. joke about Adam, Adam's a great guy, but he, we didn't know how old he was when he got invited to the Colonel Summit. In fact, we thought he worked for Microsoft because he sent such good code. And then he <laughs> showed up and his mother had to come because it was out of the country. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I don't, know, I don't know a lot of people's ages. I, I don't Okay, so if I, if I interpret the feedback, it's basically we don't have a problem. Is there anyone on the panel who would wish to disagree slightly with that opinion? Speak up, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, in a sense, it is a fair number of the same people um, doing a lot of the, the upper level maintainer work. And it's it's kind of concentrated in a lot of ways. We do bring a lot of people into our community, and we're working very hard to do more of that. You know, not only young people, but people from all around the world. It's been a big effort. The kernel developers do a lot of outreach, actually. So honestly, I, I don't worry about it that much. I worry maybe that there's enough room in, in the big sus subsystem maintainer slots for, for the ambitious youngsters to move into. Um, some of them may get frustrated and go somewhere else and start hack on OpenBSD or something. Um, but I think we're very good at bringing people in, and a lot of these people are very smart and very motivated, and I, I don't think we'll lack for talent. Yes. So do you think we have, we, we should be actually making more of an effort to increase slots at the top, as in give them some, I mean, it's, it's basically dead man's shoes at the moment, because we've never really seen a kernel maintainer retire voluntarily. Voluntarily, there are a few <laughs> have been forced out. We keep adding new subsystems with new maintainers, though. Yeah. Okay. okay, I'll buy that. So, I mean, one observation I would make is, uh, and I haven't run the numbers for this year's Kernel Summit, so I should take a look at that. But in previous years, I would say roughly anywhere from a half um, or uh, 60, 60 odd percent of people going to the Kernel Summit are, are first timers. So there's actually a fair amount of churn. Um, within the top 75 to 100 uh, attendees of the Kernel Summit. And I think that's good news, right? I mean, maybe at the very tippy top, um, there's a lot of wealth of experience uh, that uh, is hard for someone who's coming in completely new to completely step into. Um, but at the same time, I think it's also uh, valuable that we have all of that experience at the top. Um, but I think if you take a look at the people that get invited to the Kernel Summit, there is a fair amount of uh, churn. It's, it's not all the same 70 people over and over again. Yeah, so what so. you're saying is we're not an exclusive <coughs> little club, even if we are a little club. Yeah. <laughs> I think and we're also fanning out, uh, sort of like Greg mentioned, we're, we're adding more subsystems. Within a single subsystem, the, the hierarchy is growing to uh, people become more and more specialized and, and work in a small area. So, for example, just the x86 tree now is maintained by a large number of people all doing pretty specific things within the x86 architecture. And I think uh, it's sometimes it's hard. Well, you know, I do a lot of mentoring with, with folks uh, at work, and sometimes it's hard to get them motivated to understand how to actually become a, a good contributor. So I don't think we're, I don't think it's a perfect s system. Uh, but for the right type of person who's really motivated, I think there is a lot of room to, to jump in and make a difference. So does the audience agree with that? We're doing just fine and you wouldn't like us to change, or would you like to see us, to, to see us changing anything? The microphone is yours.